training. But I got here to church, and Sister Grace and Boy Alfonso and their family presented me with a jacket. Man, it made me look so good, they had to call me out of the mirror. You ever have one of those days you get up, man, you just feel good? You know, you feel like you're 5'6 instead of 5'4? You may feel taller than that, but that's how I feel. You know, I don't want to push it with the wall. My turn is too. But it just, it just, re it, it just shows me how, how every day, no matter what's going on, God is always giving you a gift, whether it's the gift of, uh, uh, of life or the gift of the sun or the gift of a place to live or a place to eat or a, a, a friendship. You know, I need my prayer warriors to continue to pray for me. I, I heard a, a, a lady on, on, the, on the internet today, she says, I don't want to be the voice. I don't want to be the face. I don't want to be the Moses. I don't want to be the Joshua. She said, I want to be the one that lifts up the hands of that one. I want to be the one that prays for that one. I want to be the one that fasts for that one. I said, Lord, I need some people to just get up and say, you know what? I'm just going to pray for you. I'm just going to lift you up. I'm just going to fast. I'm just going to, just, just because God is giving you a word and a vision. Can you say amen? Amen. I need my prayer warrior. You need to pray for Pastor V. I'm a deep, passionate man. When I'm mad, I'm mad. I don't fake the funk. If I'm happy, I'm happy. If I'm sad, I'm sad. Pray for me. My head, my heart, my soul is in the clouds somewhere on a field trip. And my body's down here in reality. Amen? But let's get through this. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding series. This is my first series. This is going to be a three-week series. I'm going to be preaching on it for three weeks. I've never done a series, and, and I'm excited to do it because usually I try to cram a lot of information into uh, 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 45 minutes, but this has given me the ability to spread it out. Amen? So if you know somebody that didn't make it today, I want you to go home and say, oh, you missed on the series. You're going to show up and be like, what happened? You can't even TiVo it, man. So they missed out. But you did it. You're here. You got to stop worrying about the ones that ain't moving and start worrying about the ones that are moving. Amen. Stop worrying about the ones that are, are negative and start worrying about the ones that ain't negative. Stop worrying about who don't go with you and start worrying about who does go with you. Amen. Amen. Book of Matthew chapter 11. I mean chapter 17 verse 11. Book of Matthew chapter 17 verse 11. Remember the theme of this series is the fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding. Yeah. Book of Matthew chapter 17 verse 11 uh, through 13. Let me see. Jesus answered and said to them, indeed Elijah is coming first and will restore all things. But I say to you that Elijah has come already and they did not know him but did to him whatever they wished. Likewise, the spirit of man is also about to suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he spoke to them of John the Baptist. The Bible says that John the Baptist comes in the spirit, in the spirit and power of Elijah. The Bible says that John the Baptist came in the spirit and power of Elijah, preaching repentance, preaching correction. Amen. Amen. You read that.
so much that it's just a, a way of life. The reason that people talk to each other the way they do is because they have no repentance. They say, well, God will forgive me, and God will forgive me, and God will forgive me, and they abuse the grace, but one day we're going to go and seek the forgiveness of God, and it won't be there. You know, God is not like a girlfriend that you treat bad. Boy, when God breaks up with you, man, you in trouble. Number two, he was then killed because he preached what people needed to hear, not what they wanted to hear. He preached correction. He preached what people needed to hear, not what people wanted to hear. Yeah. You know, Thursday was such an amazing day for me. I mean, so many things happened. And I went to a, a meeting with other pastors, big pastors, big, big names, and, and, and big churches, and big congregations. And yet, we, we, we got with these uh, uh, Hispanic pastors got together, and, and, and uh, there were so many big names, and they were talking about who they were connected with. Let me tell you something, man. You, you five people away from everybody in the world. Amen. You know, these, these people that, 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 that took me in and listened to me and had a meeting with me were, 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 had just got off the phone with, with the mayor of Denver, Colorado, had just uh, had a meeting with the chief of police in Denver, Colorado. They were superintendents. Uh, they were lawyers. They were... They were um, uh, they, they, they were, they took a book, when you write a book and they uh, publish it for you, they will publish it, yes. But there were, there were so many important people there and, and, um, and I had been struggling with this word about John the Baptist and then the, the, the one that brought us together, his name was Butch Montoya, he read, he reads a two page, he reads two pages out of a book that says, you know what, the church is so entertaining, you know, and we're entertained, and then, you know, we, we don't get rebuked, and we don't get corrected, and, and we don't ever really feel love. And, and, and he said that, and he put into words exactly what I was struggling with. You know, often, and, and you know, my family really does a good job of protecting me from those that are trying to uh, come against my character or my integrity. And, and, and it's funny because I don't need it. You know, I'm one of those dudes, I'll take you out in the back alley and then we'll just, you know, we'll shake hands afterward. You can tell your friends you won and I'll tell my friends I won. Amen? <laughs> but my family, they understand my temper. They understand where I was raised, what I was. They do a really good job of protecting me. <clears throat> and, 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 but sometimes they get so overwhelmed with, with, the, uh, with, with the, the, the attack that they slip and say things to me that, that I didn't know was going on. Like, oh man, did you hear what they put about you? Or did you hear what they said? I was like, man, I didn't hear that. Or they, <laughs> it's, uh, so, so I thought to myself, Lord, why do people do that to me? You know, really all I want to do is preach the gospel. That's all I want to do. I want to give you, you know, I want to give you the light. I want to share with what God has shared with me. I said, why? But the reason God says, you know, the reason why people that have come to this church and have left and talked the way they do about you is because you never, ever disciplined them when they were with you. Amen. 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 The reason that people that have come to this church, leave this church, and talk the way they do about me is because when they were here with me in this church, I never disciplined them. Let me give you an example. You can rob, uh, 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 you can rob a corner store, send the police on a high-speed chase, come to my house, and before the police get there, I would have convinced you that it was the will of God that you robbed that place. Joseph went to jail. Joseph went to prison. By the time Joseph was out of prison, he ran the whole prison. Maybe God wants you to go to prison so you can run the prison, and then the next thing you know, you run the whole city. <laughs> Instead of saying, you crazy person, you robbed the store, they're going to arrest you, they're going to put you in jail, and maybe a year from now, you'll be able to have paid your debt to society and start all over again. Right? He preached correction. He was killed because he told people what they needed to hear and not what they wanted to hear. Listen to this. Man, if you're writing something down, you need to write this down. The right kind of correction is needed to build better discernment. The right kind of correction is needed to build better discernment. You have to be corrected. You have to be told when you're wrong. I have trouble with 